Question five of parametric equations. Again. Um, it's all right. Okay. Uh, we've got the equation for x and y. We need to find the coordinates. Alex? Uh, the point on the curve, where the gradient is half. Um, that, it didn't say it, but that means find dy by dx, doesn't it? If you want to find the point by the gradient. And we know to find dy by dx for parametric equations, we need to find the two individual parts. So we need to start with dx by d theta, and we need to find dy by d theta, because we can differentiate them in terms of those things. Um, oh, how do we remember which one goes positive and which one goes negative? I gave, <laughs> I gave some extra marks for people who wrote the CB music system at the top of the page. But, um, I didn't really give extra marks. Differentiate sine theta, we get cos theta. Differentiate cos theta, and we get cos differentiates to minus sine. We get minus sine theta, so that gives us two sine theta. If we put it together now, dy by dx is dy by d theta divided by dx by d theta, so that's 2 sine theta over 3 cos theta. That's found dy by dx, that was easy enough. We want to find when the gradient is a half. If dy by dx equals a half, we've got 2 sine theta over 3 cos theta <coughs> is equal to a half. Actually, the easiest way of doing this now is remembering that sine theta divided by cos theta is tan theta. We really want to have it in terms of just one identity, one function. And if we rearrange this now, we've got tan theta is, that would be three quarters, wouldn't it? So tan theta is three quarters. Straight to the calculator, let's work out the value of theta that that gives us. Um, oh, this, do we need to be in degrees or radians for this? Why do we have to be in radians? Because we've used calculus. We've differentiated something to do with sine and cos, so we must now be in radians. It doesn't, it doesn't say anything. Oh, it does. It says, it says the theta is between 0 and 0. We get theta being 0.644. The question, though, Listen. Didn't just want the value of theta. The question wanted to know the coordinates. So we have to finish this off by subbing it back in. When theta equals that, we've got x is 2 plus 3 sine theta. Actually, what you could have done with this is this is a Pythagorean triple, isn't it? If it's three and four as the two sides of the... You remember this is... Um, there's the, the opposite, it's three, the adjacent is four. That side must be five, mustn't it? So you could have just said sine theta is three-fifths and cos theta is four-fifths, which gives us a nice... Anyway, if you do this, if you put that in there, you get x is 3.8 and y is 1 minus 2 cos theta and it comes out being minus 0 0.6 so there was our points I, that's this really elegant isn't it to spot that you've got Pythagorean triple and just use the fractions in there but I can do it that way so it the Dan, Dan really liked it with that, that try. Just because he. Part two. Um, we've got to find. Shh. We've got to find a Cartesian equation in part two. And people. Uh, for this part, people had difficulty trying to work out how to eliminate theta from the equation. The one thing you mustn't do is rearrange it to get theta equals. 
Okay, because that's not going to help you. Yeah. The other thing that a large number of people did wrong was they recognised that they wanted to get sine squared and cos squared theta. And so they just squared both sides of this equation and ended up with x squared equals 4 plus 9 sine squared theta. And it was quite a lot of people who did that. And of course, that's not true, is it? And instantly you've, you've lost the rest of this. If we're going to do that, we need to rearrange it first to get sine theta equals and cos theta equals, and then we can square it. So the x equation, <coughs> if we rearrange the x equation, it says sine theta is x minus 2 over 3. If we rearrange the y equation, it says cos theta is 1 minus y over 2. Once we've written both sides as single terms, now we can square both sides and add them together. We're recognising that that is true. So x minus 2 over 3 squared plus 1 minus y over 2 squared is equal to 1. And that is a Cartesian equation of the curve. So, so that's, that's probably enough as it is. I left it being x minus 2 squared over 9 plus 1 minus y squared over 4 is 1. And you can go further with that. You can multiply through by 9 and by 4 and get it all over the line and multiply the brackets. But that's enough to get you the two marks. You just need to get it as a, a tidied up equation not involving theta. Okay. But that's the way you've got to rearrange it before you square it. Or you've got to square it properly if you, if you square it. Right. Um, and that's maths. <laughs>